In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the fun effects you can apply to text in CorelDRAW. First, I'll show the tools in the Interactive Effects Toolbox, then I'll demonstrate some of the tools in the Shape Toolbox. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. Let's start with 2D effects. With all of these tools, I can either start with the object selected, or I can select the object within the tool. I have this artistic text selected, and I'll choose Contour from the toolbox. All of the effect tools have a few presets, as well as options in the property bar. I can click and drag inward to offset each character inward, or click and drag outward. Dragging the black square increases the offset, and the outlines are trimmed at the overlaps. The fill color is set here. I can increase the number of contour steps, then reduce the offset. I can adjust the corners, and these options control how the colors proceed from the object color to the contour fill at the outer edge. A high number of steps creates a nice gradient effect, and I can control the level of acceleration from start to finish. If the text has a non-solid fill, such as a fountain fill, the contour colors can also change within their steps. Here I can set the second fill color. In the Objects Inspector, note that contour is an effect applied to the text. I can break apart the contour and move the contour group away, preserving the original text. I'll undo to get the contour back. Also note that these effects can be applied to any objects, not just artistic text. I can click and drag the bubble to apply the same contour or I can clear this contour and click the copy icon, then choose the text contour to copy and apply. This effect cannot be applied to paragraph text, however. For this effect and the others in this toolbox, I would have to convert paragraph text to artistic. Next, let's look at blend, which creates a progression from one object to another. I'll copy this text and change its color. I'll activate blend and drag from one object to the other. The blue text is on top, but I can change the order in the Objects Inspector. By default, there are 20 steps between objects, but I can change this. I can also change progression to the color spectrum and adjust acceleration. I have the higher text object selected, and if I move it, the blend adjusts. I can even change the font or size. This blend can also be broken apart and ungrouped to allow for additional modifications. Next we have Distort, and there are three types of distortion. Push and Pull pulls out all of the surrounding edges of each object. I can drag the diamond to center the effect, or click the center icon. I can drag the square to change the amplitude. I'll clear and try Zipper, which adds a sawtooth effect. I can adjust amplitude or frequency, or randomize, smooth, or localize, which reduces the effect the farther I go from the center. Twister produces a swirl effect, and I can drag the center point of the swirl or change the rotation. I can use this icon to add a new distortion, in this case a zipper effect on top of the twisted text. Next I'll show envelope, which fits text to the edges of a closed curve. The default mode is Unconstrained, which works like the Shape tool. I can drag nodes to distort the text, double-click to add nodes, make nodes smooth or symmetrical, etc. There are several mapping options which control how the object fits within its envelope, such as Original, Putty, or Vertical, and I can keep straight lines straight. I can also apply an envelope of straight lines, or one that has arcs on all sides, or one that has S-curves. I can use any curve as an envelope. I'll copy this bubble, convert it to a curve, shrink it down, and use the Shape tool to make it close to an ellipse. Then I'll go back to Envelope, select the text, and click Create Envelope From. I'll click the ellipse I just made, and the text adjusts in place to fit. Now let's look at the 3D effects in this toolbox, which are Extrude, and two shadow tools. Extrude creates the effect of the selected object being pulled up. 
I'll click and drag toward the direction of the extrusion and click the color icon. By default, I'm using the object color, but I can pick a solid fill or a gradient. I can drag the X to control the direction and the line to control the length. I can also change the type of extrusion. I can also add a bevel or add lighting effects. The vanishing point is locked to the object by default, but I can change this. I'll add an extrude to another object and copy the extrude properties from the text. I can also copy the text's vanishing point. Block Shadow adds solid shadows to objects. I'll click the text to select it, then drag to where I want the shadow. As with other effects, I can drag the arrow to change the length and direction. I can change the shadow color with this icon. I'll break apart the text in shadow and move the shadow out to see how it looks. It's one solid curve. Now I'll create a new block shadow and click Simplify. Now when I break apart and move the shadow to the side, I can see the difference. The simplified one was trimmed where it met the text characters. I can click here to expand the shadow. I'll clear the shadow and in the text inspector, I'll apply an outline color and thickness to the text. When I add a block shadow, by default, it includes the outlines, but I can click this icon to keep the outlines out of the shadows. The last effect on this toolbox, but first on the list, is drop shadow. I'll click and drag to create a shadow from the left edge. The shadow start point can be along any edge of the text, and I can move this by dragging the white square. The black square sets angle and distance, and the white line controls opacity. The feathering controls the sharpness of the shadow edges, and there are several feathering options. Shadow color can be set here, and this long list of merge modes controls how the shadows blend with underlying objects. As with other effects, I can copy drop shadows. I'll convert the bubble to a curve, remove its fill, Activate Drop Shadow, click the Copy icon, and click the Text Shadow. There are also lots of effects I can apply to text after the text has been converted to curves. In addition to the familiar node editing I can do in the Shape tool, I also have all of the other tools in the Shape toolbox. For example, I can smear text by dragging, and I can press and hold the Shift key to change the nib size. Twirl is another fun effect, and dragging a tiny distance goes a long way. Or I can roughen up the edges, then use Smooth to fix them. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on text effects in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.